lose, we want to lose. That's what it's all about. The postseason is decided by who can perform in the tensest of moments and who can recover from the mental strain faster. The NLCS continues at game two. Game one was a 13-inning marathon, which ended with a sprint to the plate. 14 and a half hours later, we are ready to do it again here on TBS. 2013 National League Championship Series coverage is presented by the Venture Card from Capital One. National League Championship Series, game two in the best of seven between the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Cal Ripken and Ron Darling. Welcome back to our coverage here from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Well, drama here before game two. No Hanley Ramirez for the Dodgers. You heard the guys talking about it in the pregame show. What's your take? Uh, just terrible news for the Dodgers to get one hour before the game. Of course, he sustained the injury. Joe Kelly hit him in his first at bat in the ribs, trying to make a catch a little later. Seemed like he strained it again. And the bruised ribs are going to take Hanley out of the game that, if it's not must win, it's pretty close. So Ramirez out, Nick Punto in. And while they don't have Ramirez, they do have Clayton Kershaw, their ace on the mound. Well, he's the known. Going to win his second Cy Young later this year. You can see his numbers in the NLDS. And Michael Walker went to the minor leagues, found his curveball, has been almost unhittable since. Been flirting with no hitters his last couple of starts. Meantime, the storyline from game one, two words, Carlos Beltran. <laughs> well, he's already considered one of the best hitters in postseason history. 16 bombs in the postseason. 345 average, and also a slugging percentage that's better than Babe Ruth. And here he is last night, a big, big double off the wall off Branke that drives in two big runs to tie it. And then you can credit him with a save on this great throw to Molina at home plate. And just for fun, let's throw in the game winner right here. Down the line, sends everybody else home, gives them a one nothing lead in the series. 40 postseason games for Carlos Beltran, 34 runs batted in. We've got a beautiful day here in St. Louis. Got a dynamite pitching matchup, and we're glad you're with us here on TBS. The first pitch of game two, just around the bend.
Welcome back to St. Louis. Oh, did I mention, it's a beautiful day. Had some early morning rain, all that's gone, and bright sunshine here for game two of the National League Championship Series. Today's batting order brought to you by the Venture Card from Capital One. Different look to the uh, L.A. batting order. Carl Crawford, that stays the same as he leads off with Mark Ellis second. Everybody else moving up. Adrian Gonzalez into the three-hole. Puig hits cleanup. Uribe in the five spot. Skip Schumacher is back in center field. He's your played last night, but long night, and he will uh, not start today. A.J. Ellis is the catcher hitting seventh. Nick Punto is in there for Henley Ramirez. Hits eighth, and Clayton Kershaw doing the pitching. Michael Waka is on the mound. Pedro's favorite guy just likes to say the name. Well, he talked to manager Mike Matheny about Waka. He said his makeup is off the charts. His last start in the regular season, he went eight and two-thirds, lost his no-hit bid on the hit by Ryan Zimmerman, and his first postseason start was outstanding also, only giving up a hit in seven and a third inning. Yeah, it took a no-hitter into the eighth before giving up a home run to Pedro Alvarez. How about the Cardinal defense, Iron Man? Yeah, it's about the same. You got Matt Holliday in left, John Jay in center. Last night's hero with three gold gloves, Carlo David Freeze at third base, Peter Cosmet shortstop, Carpenter and Adams on the right side of the infield. And behind the plate, Yadier Molina with his five gold gloves, Michael Waka on the mound. It's funny, we had talked to Mike Matheny before the game, so boy, you know, you. You catch a 13-inning game uh, the night before, and of course it says, obviously it's postseason time. Yadi's going to be in there, and if I ever tried to take him out of that game, I'd have a fight on my hands. I preface it by saying, what about the regular season? He said, I still have a fight on my hands. He wants to play. Carl Crawford steps in. Michael Walker into the line and there's the first pitch of game two a ball and no strikes mark carlson calling the balls and strikes today in game two down even one and one waka likes to work quickly very interesting joe kelly started the game off with a curveball last night first pitch same with waka and the first thing i noticed and i think the viewers at home notice is why, could, why is it so dark around home plate <laughs> It's those shadows again for the odd start time, and they play a factor. They certainly do. It's hard to pick up the ball, especially the breaking ball. Tried to paint the corner and missed two balls and two strikes. Crawford was two out of six in the opener with a strikeout, hitting 348 in the postseason. Popped up over there by third. Freeze is called off by Cosma. For the first out. I like Cosma calling him off there. He had a better angle away from the sun. It's a much easier play for the shortstop. And you could tell David Freeze was struggling right away. Here's Mark Ellis, two for five last night. He was the guy cut down at the plate by Beltron. Trying to break the tie. And quickly Waka ahead, no balls and two strikes. And Mark Ellis didn't like either of those calls by home plate umpire Mark Carlson. Looked like the curveball in the second one didn't quite come down enough. Stayed up, high strike. Stayed alive, still 0-2. Waka pitched in 15 games, made nine starts this year. It was 3-1 as a starter, ERA under 3, 2.85. change at 89 miles an hour to go with that high fastball good velocity fastball on the hook 
and it, Ronnie, it's the improved curveball part of his arsenal that's really helped block it. Yeah, sent down to the minor leagues, rediscovered that breaking ball. And obviously it's given him that great third weapon to go along with the his best pitch to change up and that good gas. They off pitch. Lined into left field. That's a base hit for Ellis. Holiday sliding to corral it, and Ellis stumbled around first and will have to go back. It's a fastball that drips, drifts back over the middle of the plate. Nice play by Holiday sliding to get this baseball. A great effort, and one of the techniques is to slide so he can stop your momentum and make a throw. He was going to go until he stumbled right there. He was going to challenge the arm. Matt Holiday then thought better of it going back to first base. Now here's Adrian Gonzalez with a man on and one down. Takes 1-0. and We've got to get into this, guys, because you brought it out last night when uh, Don Mattingly chose to pinch run for Gonzalez with D. Gordon late in the game when it was tied. And I know, Cal, you said right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of this move because you were taking 100 RBIs out of a game that could go to extra innings. Yeah, two schools of thought on here. You want to go for uh, the pinch runner and kind of win the game right at that moment. It's an aggressive move. I side on the, on the fact of I want that big bat in the lineup, the number four hitter there. Um, if it was me running on first base, I wouldn't want to come off the first base bag. I'm staying in this game. His at bat did come up two other times in crucial situations. So it's one of those that you go back and maybe you second guess your decision. And Michael Young grounding into a double play and it was his fly ball to right that Beltron turned into a double play when he threw Ellis out at the plate. A ball and a strike. So Gonzalez in the three hole today with Ramirez out. Mattingly basically took everybody and shifted him up a spot, put Puno in the eight hole. You know, Don Mattingly was saying that, you know, it was a, a deal where he wanted to go for the strike, go for the run. I don't think D. Gordon has enough time for me that he's going to be an automatic s a swipe second base, steal second base at this point in his career. And part of the logic is he's on the roster for that reason, and you're looking to use him. Um, maybe just the scenario might have come later in the game with Ellis on third base, in the tagging situation, you might want, might have wanted your pinch runner to run at that point. Maybe he could have beat the throw of Carlos Beltran. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been closer, though. Gonzalez goes down swinging for out number two here in the first. Take you back to last night and D. Gordon. Forced at second on that ball deep in the hole, Cal. Yeah, I'm part of a, a runner and, and substitute the runner. Is I was surprised he didn't make that closer and almost beat that. But you can tell he bluffed or he was going to run, didn't get the jump, and lost all his secondary momentum. Um, I was expecting, with all the experience that I've had in shortstop, when you go in the hole like that in a fast runner on first base, it's going to be a bang-bang play. And that could have been a good reason um, to, to pinch run him to get to second base on that and then create a rally. Here's Puig getting clean up today. Basically, he got stuck on the left foot. And then the, the uh, throw by Cosma got him by a hair. Well, non-base stealers like myself would always focus on being consistent with your secondary. When you have other things to worry about, sometimes that timing can throw the secondary lead off. A ball and a strike to the 22-year-old who takes a strike one and two. Walker just gets that great angle with the young pitchers that throw straight over the top. That ball stays true to the corner. Line foul. I mentioned earlier, a breaking ball is tough to see in the shadows. And here's the reason why, and a changeup falls in the same category, is you, you, you can't see the depth of the pitch. Many times you can time the fastball, you can understand what 95 is, and kind of go to where you think the ball is. But you need to track a breaking ball or a changeup much better to hit it. And these conditions don't let you track it very well. Oh, 
Puig, who went 0 for 6 in the opener. Had 19 home runs and 42 runs batted in in the regular season. This is the Dodgers' first look at Waka. The Cardinals, meantime, have seen Clayton Kershaw twice and beaten him twice this year. There goes Ellis on the 1 2 is low. Huge jump by the Dodgers' second baseman. An element of surprise, just trying to time it, but also for the one two count, you know, not a whole lot to lose. You take a chance there, you'll have three leading off the inning for the next thing, but now you're rewarded with a guy in scoring position and a chance for Rasael to drive him in. Reed has knocked in two runs in this postseason. But he goes down swinging. Back to back strikeouts for Waka to end the first. And we'll be back. We head to the bottom half of the first here in St. Louis. The batting order brought to you by the Venture Card from Capital One. Matt Carpenter leads it off. Last night's hero, Carlos Beltran, hitting second. Holiday is hitting third. And Molina will hit cleanup today against the left-hander, Kershaw. David Fries in the five-hole. Matt Adams, who had hit cleanup last night, is in the six-hole. Then it's John J. Pete Cosma and Michael Waka against Clayton Kershaw. Well, Clayton Kershaw, regular season, his record is 77 and 46. If you take into all the starts this year, including his postseason win, 17 and 9 this year, and already has 249 innings pitch. Matt Carpenter steps in to lead it off for St. Louis. One out of four in the opener, but just two for 23 in the postseason. Swinging at the first pitch and driving it into the gap. He won't get there. The ball is off the wall. Carpenter rounds second on his way to third. And he will be in there. 
A lead-off triple from Matt Carpenter. Just a bullet in the gap, which with great speed, he thought he had a chance at it. Takes an angle, slips and falls, and then doesn't pick it up the first time, which enables Matt Carpenter going to third base with the leadoff triple. The first tug at Superman's cape, Matt Carpenter. And here's Beltron, who knocked in all three St. Louis runs in the opener. Swinging at the first pitch and popping it up. The rebate calls. And that's out number one. Big out. Nice job by uh, Uribe taking charge. That looked like it's going to be a problem for a while. The pitcher's role in that, if you can, is once you recognize who's going to get it, yell his name over and over so you have a couple people calling Uribe's name. He got the sun to deal with, and the ball wasn't hit that high for the corners to get in there. So sometimes it's okay for the pitcher to take control and call that ball. You'd have caught it. Absolutely. Here's Matt Holiday. One ball and no strikes. <laughs> Get out of the way of Uribe. Through a fastball, one and one. Again, playoff baseball, we talked about this yesterday. You're not willing to give up any runs in any inning. So the infield's tight, trying to cut off this run. Shadows play a part for the infielders when they play in tight like this? I would think so. Yeah, many times it's hard to pick the ball up off the bat. Normally when it's bright in the backdrop with uh, many different white colored shirts. But right now you have contrasting conditions. And your eyes don't adjust really well to that. So yeah, it's just as tough for the fielders coming off the bat. We've got a lot of fans waving white towels here in St. Louis. It's one and two. Third, Holiday waiting on Kershaw. In the dirt, Ellis blocked it. Count even. We talked to Mike Matheny and said, You've had success. You've beaten Kershaw twice. Is there a mindset that your hitters take to the plate? He said John Mabry really works with these guys on an individual basis as to what their approach should be. He said mostly you just got to grind out at bats against this guy. Carpenter got it going, swinging at the first pitch. And is at third with a triple with one down. Holiday goes down swinging for out number two. And here's Molina. Well, about as tight a spin as you're going to see on a breaking ball. About as big of a break are you going to see in a breaking ball from Kershaw. It's the optical illusion that it almost starts to go up out of his hand and then start to break. We get tracking that in the uh, sunlight conditions in the shade makes it even harder. Holiday had Kershaw's number a little bit. Good at bats at 300 lifetime off of him. Molina swings at the first pitch and fouls it away. 0-1. I like the Cardinal approach. I mean, we, we had the Braves earlier, and they talked about a collective approach, trying to wear Kershaw down, make him throw some more pitches. But I believe that each individual hitter hits a certain way. And so you should take what you have and then apply it to that pitcher and then grind it out any way you can. In tight with the 0-1, count even. So Molina trying to get done what Beltron and Holiday could not. Let's get Carpenter in from third after that leadoff triple. Chevy pitch tracks on Kershaw. And Molina steps out. One thing you can get with Carpenter at third base, 
because of the left-handed Kershaw is back in the stretch is to Carpenter. He can get a huge lead in case one of those curveballs gets away from Ellis. who handles his first chance, and it was a biggie. Lead-off triple comes to nothing for St. Louis. We head to the second. Bush Stadium, the Dodgers coming to bat in the top of the second inning. Not only has Hanley Ramirez been scratched from the lineup, but a few moments ago, down below with the medical staff, he tried to swing a bat. He was not able to after getting hit in the ribs last night. It could be more serious than first thought. He has left the locker room. He's on his way to get x-rays. Andre Ethier starting for the first time in the postseason yesterday. He'd been bothered with that ankle. He came to the ballpark sore and stiff. He also is out of the lineup. As for the starting pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, well, a long night. He left the ballpark in the eighth inning. The Cardinals Hotel and also the Dodgers Hotel right next door. He uh, told the skipper, hey, if you need me to come back to pinch hit, I will. But they didn't need him, so he watched the end of the game comfortably in bed. <laughs> Thank you very much, Craig. Juan Uribe leading it off for the Dodgers here in the second. He's been hot, knocked in two runs in each of the last three games for the Dodgers. One one from Walker on the ground. He's short. Easier ways to get back into the uh, into the flow than what Punto had right here, Cal. Well, when I was watching that, it looked like he got caught, got caught in between in, in, in a, a middle hop. But he played that on the run. He's a good fielder anyway. But he made that look a lot easier than it actually was. That's the way the first ended. As Kershaw stranded Carpenter, who had tripled. It was like. Kershaw got punched in the mouth. First pitch, triple to the wall, and he 
was able to bear down and get out of the inning. The in-between hop, you know, just if it's close to you, that short hop, you can reach out and get it. If it's long, you have time to, to, to view it. But if you get caught in between, it's almost a guesswork to where the ball is going to bounce. Schumacher takes two balls and a strike. He's back in center field. We heard Craig Sager's report, and we talked about Ethier playing last night as Cosma fields this on the line. That's easy. Two down. To get exclusive behind the scenes access and expert opinions from the biggest names in sports, check out Behind the Mic powered by Ford on bleacherreport.com slash behind the mic. So Don Mattingly telling us that before the game, Ethier possibly available if they were going to double switch and, and could probably play later, but not going to start him today after the long night in game one. That was a tough position having played having not played in a while. That actually then logged that many innings. But as the game uh, went on, he was almost locked in. Schumacher, Schumacher was used as a pinch hitter, and he had to do that. The 1 0 hit to center. John Jay shields his eyes. Had him played perfectly. 1 2 3 inning for Michael Walker. Heading to the bottom of the second. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Bottom of the second in St. Louis. Great day to fly. And you see a, a day like this with the bright sunshine. And now we see Kershaw in the sun and then shade and the batter in the sun. That's David Freeze who leads it off here in the bottom half of the second. John Smoltz always say that. He would ask his catcher, what are you having trouble seeing? He said, but then he figured, okay, then the hitter's having trouble seeing that pitch too. That's what I'm going with, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, 
on the ground to third, Uribe. So if you're just keeping a pole on some of the more sharply hit balls to this point, all fastballs. Ellis hit the ball down the line. Carpenter hit the tri triple in the gap. I think Uribe hit a hard ball, and they're all on fastballs. They start to time the fastball. Not real good swings on the off-speed pitches so far. It's going to be a tough, tough day for the hitters, for sure. Because this, this, this shadow is going to continue different elements of it all the way probably to the seventh or eighth inning of the game. In the dirt to Matt Adams. 1-0. This is what you see. <laughs> That's well, a great shot. Our guys are the best. That is just a great, great shot. Gives you a perspective of what the hitter is feeling. Unfortunately for the hitter, it's not coming in that slowly. That's our, that's our great camera back there. But, man, I can just imagine, Cal, what your approach would be when you're facing that. Adams lines it to first, and that's two down. So what was, what do you do at the plate, Cal? Yeah? Well, I used to, uh, you know, again, try to look for the fastball and try to lay off the breaking balls as, as best you can because you need to track the breaking ball, and there's a depth and a change in speed. But the consistent part of the fastball, you know, generally speaking, how hard that guy's thrown that day, so it's a little bit more of a timing. So I would look for fastball all the time. And I think it's no coincidence that we're having a lot of two and three pitch at bats because guys are trying to be very aggressive. John Jay with a big cut. 0-1. Don't get me wrong, it's not really easy to see the fastball either. <laughs> but of the two, and hitting is about timing, you can time the fastball a little bit better. Umpires are affected, catchers are affected. Small ballparks, no foul territory. You've got to give us a couple of days like this every <laughs> once in a while. Kershaw ahead, a ball and two strikes. Jay was 0 for 5 in the opener. saw Oral Hershiser are running around here covering the game and reminded me of the matchup between him and Messina in Cleveland under similar circumstances. And again, the whole first eight innings, you know, was 0-0. The game really didn't start <laughs> until the ninth, in my opinion. Two good pitchers taking advantage of the shadows. The 2-2 two -two pitch. On the ground to second. Ellis to Gonzalez. And a 1-2-3 inning for Kershaw. Two innings in the books in St. Louis.
MLB Fan Cave is coming back in 2014. Players, celebrities, concerts, and more. You can be part of next season's team. Go to MLBFanCave.com and apply right now. Top of the third here in St. Louis, and Nick Punto will lead it off. If you're just joining us, he's the starting shortstop today. Hanley Ramirez not playing. It was announced as bruised ribs after he took that pitch last night. Stayed in the game the rest of the night, but got to the ballpark today. The training staff took a look at him, and as Craig Sager reported earlier in this game, he has been taken for x-rays. is Danny DeVito's favorite player. <laughs> the actor at a game was sporting the Punto jersey and Nick obliged with one of his two home runs of the night of the uh, season rather. It was at that game. It was interesting to see Punto towering over DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ron Darling, folks. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. And the count full. out of the day for Michael Walker. We've been talking a lot about the sun in the shade, and there's a guy who's always got it made in the shade, Greg Sager. Well, he's, it's very hard and difficult, obviously, to focus on the pitch. You're trying to do it as quickly as possible. Now, studies have indicated that the direction and trajectory of the pitch are the first bits of information that are sent to the brain. But they're saying that the most difficult and therefore the thing that takes the most time is for your brain to process, and that's the involves the speed of the pitch. So as a hitter, Cal, uh, what are you looking for up there? The fastball, it seems like you made my case for me that uh, looking for the speed of the pitch or the changes in speed is what the uh, brain can't process that quickly. Your eyes can see it. You can guess where it is. Cosmo throws out Kershaw for out number two. Last inning, we saw Adrian Gonzalez at first. This is a great view right here to see what Adrian Gonzalez is looking at. Dark, light, and it's dark again, and it comes back in the light. Now, this ball was hit off the end of the bat, but it looks like it's coming 1,000 miles an hour. Agon stays with it and makes the play. Well, we're talking about a first baseman with the, as good a hands as there are in baseball. Top of the Dodger order, Carl Crawford takes a strike. He popped up his first time. And he's behind. No balls and two strikes. In the air to left field. Holiday makes the play. And it's another 1 2 3 inning for Michael Walker. Middle of the third in game two.
Sawn in the shade. Making it very tough for the hitters here in game two. Michael Waka. Now you don't see me. Now you do. And for Nick Punto, a little late. Eight, nine, and one do for the Cardinals against Clayton Kershaw. In the bottom half of the third. Cosma is four for five career against Clayton Kershaw. One of those days he went four for four, had a bases loaded double. Off the end of the bat. Cuddles threw him out. Kershaw had a little funny finish there as he hit the mound. He, he tried to reach back with his foot to try to stop the ball from going up the middle and almost did the splits. Off to try to stick his foot out. You know, towards the end, tail end of my career, people were really experimenting with different types of sunglasses in these conditions. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen um, some of the hitters come up. Maybe the second time around, they're going to say, I got to do something to see the ball. Mike Uribe is using his sunglasses really nice on the top of his head. <laughs> There's Michael Walker. And quickly Kershaw is ahead. No balls and two strikes. The different lenses, the yellow lens, or something that brightens the area that you're around would make it a little easier. Two strikes. Well, back when you were playing, Cal, you had the old flip down. Flip down. Down. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. And yes, we did. They had a certain charm in their own right as Waka goes down swinging. And if you're playing in Oakland in that high, high sky, you need a little bit more. And those flip down uh, sunglasses provided you a whole lot more. Uh, can't think of the right word. You cut the sun <clears throat> a whole lot better than, uh, than wearing the glasses that you can see everything with. You'd have a hard time finding a lot of players who would know how to use the flip down glasses today. Top of the order now. Matt Carpenter. He tripled on the first pitch he saw in the bottom of the first. But the Cardinals couldn't get him in. Beltron popped up. Holiday struck out. Molina grounded out. So we are still scoreless here in the bottom half of the third. Pretty good pitch right there. After he hit that fastball, he didn't hurt his feelings. He's, he's thrown two more. One away and one in. Throwing on the run and got him. Three up, three down for Kershaw. Three in the books in game two.
end of the game is just the start of the story. Unguarded with Rachel Nichols premieres Friday night, October 25th, 10.30 Eastern and Pacific on CNN. Top of the fourth, the two, three, four hitters due for the Dodgers against Michael Walker. Mark Ellis singled sharply to left his first time. But the Dodgers couldn't move him along. No balls and a strike. That game last night, going 13 innings, was the 13th time that an LCS game has gone extra innings. And in the previous 12, the winner of that game went on to win the series. I'm not suggesting we pack up and go home and this thing's <laughs> over, but it is uh, one of those interesting tidbits to uh, to chew on. Great, great way to start this, this series last night. Tough, tight ball game. Came down to Beltron in the 13th. There's got to be something to that. I'm still trying to figure out why. What's the significance of playing the long game and winning it that gives you an advantage in the series? It may be one of those scientific things we have to turn over to SEGS, like the sun and the shade and the speed and the math. <laughs> Hitters in the postseason are one for 20 when they have two strikes on him against Walker. He's got three different weapons the 94 plus mile an hour fastball, great change up in the curveball to put you away. Once again, uh, Mark McGuire in the ear of Yassiel Puig. Rounded to third. For the first out. Now guys, do you want to think of any theme about? St. Louis pitching. You look at Waka, and he, his makeup is off the charts. They say he's an incredibly hard worker. He's a sponge in listening to Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright. But one thing they do, the Cardinals, as a staff, they throw two pitches, secondary pitches over for strikes, and that's what he does. He went down to the minor leagues. He learned his curveball to get that over, and he's got that great change up. And all of their pitchers, Joe Kelly last night, can throw their secondary pitches for strikes at any time. Yeah, to add to what you said is it starts with a great arm, and that jumps out at if you if you have a great command of a great arm, then your secondary pitches are much more effective. In the air to center, Jay a little bit of a late start got his bearings and squeezed it for the second out. When the ball actually gets in the sun, and many outfitters use their glove in the sun, and it's a panic situation when you can't see it right away. You have to tell yourself it's going to come out sometime. <laughs> Jay does it uh, very routinely out there in center, though, very smooth. So we get the plate with two down. Struck out his first time. Fooled him. Ball on a strike. Walker very poised. Product of Texas A&M where he went 27 and 7. Took the Aggies to the College World Series. Ball and two strikes. And you look at the bookends on his season. First start was against the Royals. Where he gave up one run on two hits in seven, then nearly threw a no hitter in his last regular season start. I think that's the, the best example of the angle. It comes over top, and it is right in the bottom of the strikes on a little low, but to the hitter, it's it, it, it perceived as way low. I remember old Dan Plesak when he was with uh, Milwaukee, probably had. Made it feel like a tall left-hander, threw over the top, threw very hard. And it almost felt like it was coming straight down into the strike zone. 2-2. Two, two. He stays alive. I know he had a tough season this year, but in today's game, Josh Johnson of the Toronto Blue Jays is a guy that 
when he was at his best straight over the top and that ball looked like it was going to end up below the strike zone but it would stay true at the bottom Walker has that the seals putting on a nice at bat battling I think that was a slider we hadn't seen that 88 mile an hour slider or a version of his changeup I think it was just a hard changeup inside Hard changeup, oxymoron, I guess. <laughs> Forty-six thousand plus wanted it. Block is not getting it. Three and two. Like you said, good at bat here by Yasiel Puig. But he got him there. Fourth strikeout for Waka. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It's golf's most exclusive event, major champions only at the 2013 PGA Grand Slam of Golf from the Port Royal Golf Course in Bermuda. It all starts Tuesday, October 15th at 4 o'clock Eastern on TNT. Bottom of the fourth, Carlos Beltran takes a strike. I remember watching Beltran play a few seasons ago, right after he'd had right knee surgery. Uh, and there were lots of questions about how he was going to come back from that. Takes another strike. And he wasn't trying to do too much at that point. It looked like it really affected his mobility. And he had, he had said at that time, Our time will come. My time will come. Well, St. Louis fans not doubting that for a moment. As his, uh, he has added to his uh, incredible postseason resume already in this series. Finding his way back from that right knee surgery to be a real force for this team. He popped up his first time with Carpenter standing on third.
Arkansas just missed in the count full to Beltron. He's six for 24 in the postseason with nine runs bad runs bad. a walk to lead off the fourth. Moments ago, we spoke with Dodgers manager Don Mattingly in the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Hey, Don, can you kind of take me through the events of when Hanley Ramirez got to the ballpark and you had to make the decision that he wasn't going to go today? Uh, well, really, we just had him in there from the beginning, thinking he was going to be able to go. Uh, at that point, wanted to put the lineup up early and not talking to Hanley. Knew he was sore once he finally got here. Uh, and then we, you know, kind of tried to loosen him up, took him into the cage, let him take a few swings, and once he did that, we knew uh, they knew he wasn't going to be able to go. Hey, Donnie, tough conditions to hit right now. The shadows are too tough about making an adjustment, or, or you just have to grind it out and do the best you can. We're just trying to grind it out. Um, you know, these two guys, both guys with good stuff, and I don't think it's going to get any easier. It looks like it's going to just keep getting worse. So, uh, you know, it's going to be one of those games you feel like it's going to be low scoring if you can put a run or two up. Uh, it may be enough. Thanks to Don Mattingly. And as you listen to his comments from between innings, you saw the double play turn 6 4 3 to erase the leadoff walk to Beltron. And here's Yadier Molina. We talked about the effect on the hitter uh, with the sun and the shadows early. Now you're getting into a position. Where the pitcher's going to be right in the sun here, Ronnie. What's that like for you? Uh, you? You don't mind it if there's different conditions for the hitter. I think what the double edged sword is, you know, these guys are so talented. The hitters are going up and being so aggressive, the pitch counts are both down. So you're going to be seeing these guys late into the ball game if they continue to pitch the way they're pitching. Does the glare get in your eyes and, and so you can't see where you're throwing the ball? Sometimes it does. You just pull your cap down a little bit, kind of lower your eyes in the strike zone, maybe block it with the glove. That last image kind of a Cy Young silhouette of Clayton Kershaw. The thing that's a little scary is that when you follow through, when you have the sun, you can sometimes lose track of the ball off the bat. On the ground to third, your rebate nice stop. And retires Molina. Four innings in the books in game two of the NLCS.
Welcome back to St. Louis. And the Dodgers and the Cardinals each have one hit, both coming in the first inning. And we are moving to the fifth. Lonnie Ribe. Tried to check his swing, but did not. Mike Everett makes the call down at first. Michael Waka into the line. Foul back 0 and 2. So the Dodgers have played five postseason games. Uribe has six runs batted in. And he goes down on three pitches. As Molina throws down to Adams to complete the strikeout. In the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Moments ago, we spoke with the Cardinals manager, Mike Matheny. Mike, we've talked up here in the course of this game about just the conditions in the day game here in St. Louis. Lots of sun, lots of shadows, and, uh, and the effect they're having. What's your take? Well, I think um, most most stadiums about this time of day have the same thing going on in the fall. And, uh, it's just uh, it's something that both teams have to deal with. There's really not an advantage either way. Nice to see Matt Carpenter break out with a, with a triple. Yeah, sure was. It'd been nice to capitalize on. We had the guys up there that we wanted to, but uh, you know, good pitchers bear down, make you earn it. And, uh, you know, he got he got out, and uh, that was a tough spot for us. We'd love to have got something going positive. Thanks to Mike Matheny. That uh, Carpenter triple came on the first pitch at the bottom of the first, but the Cardinals stranded him there. It was interesting his answer to the shadows. It was almost like, you know, can't complain about it. Just get the job done. <laughs> Don't tell me how rough the seas are. <laughs> Bring the ship in. All in two strikes. Schumacher fouls it off. To conclude this start. Walker in his last three starts. 20 and a third innings pitched. Only three hits and a run. Teddy Barrett down there at third says he didn't go. Schumacher grounded to Cosma his first time. And he bats here in the fifth. Pat slowly to second. That's a play from Carpenter, two up and two down. Five ground ball outs now for Walker. He spends most of his time in the bottom part of the strike zone. Also five strikeouts through four and two thirds. Here's the Dodgers catcher, A.J. Ellis. 94 for a strike 0 and 1. Hit to the gap in left center field. Jay on the move. He won't get there. That ball is off the wall and into the stands for a ground rule double. So A.J. Ellis connects here in the fifth. The Dodgers have a runner in scoring position. And a fastball at 94. Again, in my uh, poll here, all the balls that have been hit hard have been off the fastball. Just miss hit this ball out of the ballpark. One of the few hitters that has gotten two fastballs in a row from Walker. And that will bring up Nick Punto. We saw Schumacher's half swing in a, a couple change ups. And again, it's the deceptive uh, part of that is it looks like the fastball you can't hold up, and the conditions actually contribute to that. You just can't tell your pitcher not to throw fastballs. And the infield's got infielders got together with Molina and Walker, went over what sign they're going to use. Down low, 1 0. Pudo struck out his first time, leading off the third. And they couldn't get them out against the Braves, but have struggled so far early. 
it's a good sign when your middle infielders don't have to come in and find out what sign until uh, the middle of the game. Got to be careful here. You got that National League situation. Eighth place hitter, pitcher on deck. Only problem is Kershaw had 10 RBIs during the regular season. No pitcher had more. He waits in the on deck circle. Punto, if you're just joining us, getting the start at short today. Hanley Ramirez out for the Dodgers. Big cut. Came up empty, two balls and a strike. Not that he wouldn't have thrown the 2 0 change up there. It seemed like the right pitch with first base open. Less of a risk with the pitcher on deck. I'll tell you, you do know as a pitcher, when you're pitching against a guy like Kershaw in these kind of conditions, one run could beat you. Ellis with the lead at second. Walk out of the plate and the count even. Two balls and two strikes. See the fake by Malik, uh, Molina. They had put a play on. But Punto had not made contact. He was going to pick off the runner Ellis at second base. Yeah, you could see him turn his glove a little bit. Got eye contact with one of the middle infielders and turned his glove. And hey, I'm coming up throwing. A subtle move, the one that you and, my, you and I both picked up. Misses with the 2 2 and the count full. See his eyes locked into the shortstop. That's all you need sometimes. Sometimes you show the open glove, and he'll show the open glove back. He will twist it to get his attention. It's when you make that move when nobody else is looking. Payoff pitch to Nick Punto. Called. A toss of the bat by Punto. And Waka heads to the dugout. He's shut him out through five.
Series coverage on TBS is presented by the Venture Card from Capital One. Beautiful day here in St. Louis for game two. Games three, four, and five at Chavez Ravine on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. David Freeze will lead it off against Clayton Kershaw in the bottom of the fifth. Scoreless. Freeze grounded to third his first time. In the dirt. Count even. Ball and a strike. He gave you Walker's numbers in his last three start. Kershaw's number in this postseason 17 innings pitch only an earned run and seven hits so both pitchers at the top of their game. A ball and two strikes. Kershaw's ERA in his career against the Cardinals is 3.75 that's his highest against any National League team. Losing record against them in 12 starts. And four and five and 0 oh and two this year. In fact, one of those losses here in this ballpark when the Dodgers came in with that 15 game road winning streak. Well hit over third. Base hit and into the corner. Crawford chases it down and it's a leadoff double here in the fifth for David Freeze. Yeah, not a fastball right here. An overhand hook. David stays on it, sees it well, and lines it down to the left field corner. That's really the first curveball with a good swing on it by Freeze. I wonder if the shadows are becoming less of a factor. You saw Crawford position himself to play their carom and it really took off. Almost got past it. And here's Adams. Well, the Cardinals in the first got a leadoff triple out of Matt Carpenter, but they stranded him there. A pop up, a strikeout, and a ground out. Here in the fifth, it's a leadoff double by David Freeze. Got through AJ Ellis and frees the third. There are some instances where catchers are trying so hard to frame that ball perfectly that they don't get it in the pocket, and that's what happened to Ellis there. Now we've got that first inning situation again here in the fifth. Runner at third, nobody out. Play. Three balls and no strikes. Just peering at the infield defense and the shift ordinarily when you bring your infield in you're coming to, to stop the angle to cover more territory but they still have a mini shift on with the infield in. aggressive with Adams there swinging three and oh Swung 3 0, hit a hard ground ball. They're not afraid to swing 3 0. Full account to big Matt Adams.
17 home runs in the regular season, 51 runs batted in it. Has gone deep here in the postseason. 3 2. Struck him out. Third strikeout for Clayton Kershaw. Some kind of stepping up by Kershaw. First fastball down. Of course, the one that went to the backstop. And then missed again upstairs, but got back in it by the swing and foul ball by Adams. A fastball up and then slider away. Nasty. Now here's John Jay. Dodger infield in. Scoreless game in the fifth. He takes outside. If you're thinking about a safety or squeeze bunt, Jay's probably one of the best punters on the team. Jose Okendo will give the sign. If it's on, he will tell the base runner freeze. Yay or nay. One and one. If you're an infielder suspecting that uh, there might be a squeeze suicide squeeze one of the indicators are is the answer back from the batter to the third base coach because everyone needs to know hey we're on the same page here so I used to always key on the hitter to see if he was doing anything different in this situation here comes freeze and the bunt is fouled back Look at the language of baseball. Matheny to Okindo, Okindo to Freeze. Now a ball and two strikes. That was disguised so well, that's what makes it a tough bunt because Jay doesn't square around until so late. Fly ball left field. Freeze will tag. Crawford with the catch. The throw to the plate, offline, and the Cardinals are on the board. It's one nothing. Crawford doesn't possess the strongest arm. And you knew they were going to test him right there. His ball leaks more towards the middle of the infield. Don't play at the plate. It's interesting. Uribe just then threw the ball over to Punto at third base. They appealed to see if Freeze left early. Ted Barrett, no call. Here's Cosma. Well, Kershaw worked his way out of that first inning trouble with the leadoff triple. But here, a leadoff double, then the pass ball that got Freeze to third. And Jay brings him in with the sacrifice fly to left. So it's 1 0, bottom five. And Adrian Gonzalez will squeeze that for the third out. But the Cardinals get on the board. David Freeze scores the game's first run.
aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-what, Ron? DirecTV. Thank you very much. We are zipping right along, top half of the sixth. The conditions to me seem a little bit more even right now. Maybe the sun went in behind the cloud. If you're the hitter, you want to run to home plate right now. Clayton Kershaw leading it off against Michael Waka. So we saw Kershaw in game four of the NLDS and now here in game two of the NLCS. And all three runs he's allowed unearned. And look at Kershaw. We told you he could handle the bat. Lead off single to left. Here's how the only run of the game has scored. Freeze tagging up on the fly ball to left. Well, that might be the only mistake Walker's made so far. To a 0-2 changeup to a pitcher. A changeup to a pitcher is a very hittable pitch because that's their bat speed. Top of the order now with Carl Crawford, who's 0 for 2. Pop the short, fly to left. Walk is allowed only three hits. On the ground. Great stop by Carpenter. But then he throws the ball away and Kershaw is on his way to third. Tim Wallach will hold him up right there. And the runners are at second and third with nobody out. Yeah, this was a great play, but it may be a mistaken judgment to try to force the runner at second base. Felt he had a little time, long throw, would have been safe anyway, and now you're in a second and third situation. I think what Carpenter was thinking here is that Crawford's running on the play. He's not going to get him at first base. Of course, the pitcher's going to be a little slower. Let's take a chance at him. He also had to step over the baseball, did Kershaw. The throw way off line, and Kershaw's going to be safe even with a good throw. He had an outside chance of uh, making a short, hard throw to get Crawford. Um, but little chance to uh, to get Kershaw going in the second. Infield hit for Crawford. Runners advance on the error. And so moments after getting on the board, the Cardinals in trouble here in the top half of the sixth. Runners at second and third. Nobody out for Mark Ellis. Ellis has been good in this role all year long. Man on third, less than two outs, batted 563. I think it's interesting right now, defensively, they're trying to discourage the run, maybe even play for the run a little bit. But the risk is once you is once you're down and the ball goes in, not only do you give up the time run, but the go-ahead run. Popped him up. Carpenter squeezes for out number one. Usually the number is usually higher than that when you're having the kind of afternoon walk we've had, but he's been able to get back in the counts with his good changeup and breaking ball. Gonzalez at the plate, and they're going to put him on. Well, we talked about this last night. Mike Matheny and his staff have identified that when Hanley was at the plate last night, he's not going to beat him, and neither is Gonzalez today with Hanley out of the lineup. That'll bring Yasiel Puig to the plate with the bases loaded. It does set up the double play, but Puig's not your average person that you can throw out on the double play. Probably the infield will uh, create a force out at home home plate. I think they, what they see in Puig is a guy that plays in high motion and a guy that you can go to if you get ahead to strike out. It's the 
22-year-old Edge of Yasiel Puig, who bats in a big spot here in game two. Now, base is loaded. One out in a one-nothing game. Shelton Manis in the pen for St. Louis. Weeks 0 for 2 with a couple of K's. And a big swing and a miss there, 0 and 1. Don Mattingly was saying today he does not need to take that big cut. McGuire doesn't want him to take that big cut. He's so strong, all he has to do is make contact, it'll fly out of the ballpark. Dodgers lead from every base. As Puig steps out and Molina will talk to Waka. Interesting with a veteran Crawford on second base, you have to be thinking that you just want to make sure that there's no relaying of signs. Make him a little more difficult. Kershaw, who got this started with a leadoff single at third. Crawford reached on an infield single. Gonzalez threw the intentional walk to Lodum. We takes a strike, two and two. That's a big call there by the umpire. First glance, it looked low. That pitch we talk about down the strike zone from Walker. strikes count even two and two as Puig bats with the bases loaded He saw that pitch pretty well. Three really hard fastballs. He usually sets up that changeup really well. He didn't bite on it at all. Let's see what Molina likes to do now. Good idea by Puig. Walker likes to work fast. Make sure you're ready to go. is inside and now the count full. Another change up. He laid off of it saw it well. Does he have the guts to throw a 3-2 change up here? The nope. problem is that Puig has taken a lot of fastballs for strikes in this series. I gotta believe this is a fastball count here. He's throwing the fastball by. And again talk in time. Steps out, and now Molina will again have a word with Waka. Sometimes in this situation, they'll go with a verbal signal. You got both the middle infielders in. They'll make a decision on the pitch, and don't put a sign down, or put some decoy signs down. You want to check with your pitcher. You want to make sure that he's 100% committed to the pitch he wants to throw. Another bad one ties the game. And he struck him out. That battle of 22-year-olds goes to the Cardinals' right-hander. And he didn't give a sign and went with the fastball. 
and Puig could not lay off of it. The kind of swing that you get caught in between. Am I going to get a changeup? Am I going to get a fastball? I want to make sure it's in the strike zone. Uribe, 0-1. He knocked in both of the Dodger runs in game one. Has six runs batted in in the last three games. And has the bases loaded with two out. 96 out of the zone, ball and a strike. Bases loaded, you get that big second out. You got to kind of reset as a pitcher because you got to do it one more time. Kershaw, Crawford, Gonzalez, the runners. Many times you think you're out of it. You're out of the jam, and you're not out of the jam yet. A ball and two strikes to Uribe. the Dodgers. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Michael Walker. As pumped as you can get after that top half of the sixth. Leads it off. And 
takes a strike. So he struck out Puig for the third time for the second out, then got Uribe on strikes to end the inning. Got a healthy cut there. 0 oh 2. Another tough, tight ball game here at Bush Stadium in the NLCS. 3 2 and 13 in game one. 1 0 here in the bottom of the sixth. struck out his first time one of three strikeouts for Kershaw he fights that off one and two and not a lot of strikeouts for Kershaw especially in the conditions but favorable to the pitch count right now only right around 60 pitches thrown comes the one two breaking pitch got him looking one down here in the sixth well you saw the way that last half inning ended Walker was pumped up and look at the veteran Yadier Molina as the Cardinals escape a bases loaded jam motions evident on both sides in that sixth Rodgers are scoreless in their last 16 innings. Top of the order now, Matt Carpenter right. makes a strike. He tripled in the first on the first pitch from Kershaw, but was stranded there, and he grounded out the short in the third. Two. Yeah, two different types of breaking balls. We saw it from Greinke last night. Really mastered the different types and kept the hitters off stride. That's a slider on the first pitch and that big slower hook to the second one. Missed inside a ball and two strikes. Want to take me inside? Waka right now is a 22 year old working with a lead and escaping danger like he did in the six you know, got what, three innings left. Yeah what's he trying to do is really get your motion back on keel. Browner to Gonzalez who will take it himself for the second out. The innovative status brought to you by Nissan. Clayton Kershaw's whip the last five seasons. That's hits and walks per inning combined at 1.05. But back to the Cardinals right-hander for a second. Yeah, I think when you have that uh, big of a, an emotional moment and you're still in the ball game now, his pitch count is up around 100, so he probably only has one more inning to go. So what you're trying to tell yourself, come on, three more outs. Let's get this team three more outs and I win this game. Carlos Beltran 0 for 1 with a walk. Uh, we know he can pitch with high emotion. He pitched in Pittsburgh with a game, an elimination game for St. Louis. And he pitched as well as he's been pitching all season long. It did not affect him. That Beltran fooled way out in front of all in two strikes. He walked to Beltran in the fourth. The only one issued by Kershaw today. It was quickly wiped out with a double play. And 
Kershaw strikes him out. Two more strikeouts here in the sixth for the Dodgers lefty. 2013 National League Championship Series coverage on TBS presented by the Venture Card from Capital One. at our Liberty Mutual pitcher comparison. We were looking forward to this matchup in game two. Kershaw, Waka, and they have not disappointed, right? Uh, just outstanding. You know, Kershaw has 72 pitches. He's going to be able to get, you know, seven, eight innings, maybe a full complete game if they come back. Waka's first pitch fouled off by Skip Schumacher. Hundred and two pitches for the right hand. Sharply to short. Osmond Adams one down. Starting to see better swings on the breaking ball now, which is, is an indication that the conditions are getting a little bit more even. That was a change up right there. Schumacher stayed on it and drilled it right at the shortstop. Mike Matheny conferring with pitching coach Derek Lilliquist for the Cardinals. St. Louis has a filthy left hander warming up. Kevin Segrist. AJ Ellis takes a strike. He's one for two with a fifth inning double. Still plenty of pop. 95 from Walker. Well, Ellis proved he could hit the fastball last time. Start him off the breaking ball, a little bit more careful on a fastball away on the next two pitches. And that was just a perfect pitch. Down in the strike zone on the outside corner. Craig Sager, what you got? 
Well, the Dodgers trying to end the 16 consecutive inning scoreless streak. Andre Ethier and Michael Young both down below in the cages. They've been hitting in between innings, getting ready for possible pinch hit duty. All right, thank you very much, Craig. Ellis tried to check. And Mike Everett says he did. Two balls and two strikes. Count full now to the Dodger catcher. Nick Punto is on deck. Again, if you're just joining us, Dodgers playing without Henley Ramirez today. After he was hitting the ribs in game one. It was announced as bruised ribs, but uh, they understand taken for x-rays. In the air to left center field and drifting over is John Jay. Two up and two down here in the seventh. You see him using his fastball 76% of the time. He's had a great one. One of the higher percentages for a starter, isn't it? Yeah, you'll usually see it 60 to 65 percent, but if you had it, if you had that fastball, <laughs> <it's>, you'd, <laughs> you'd use it more. Here's Punto. Two trips, two strikeouts, and takes a strike, 0 and 1. We talked about that downward angle. He seems like he's got it in this inning. A couple of really good low strikes, about 95 miles an hour. Oh and two. It's almost like he's trying to power his way through the center. And a flag waving frenzy here at Bush Stadium. Well hit in the center base hit. Pudo took the 0 2 pitch in the center. Went away from the fastball and tried to change up. Left it too much over the plate. Uh, Clayton Kershaw is due for the Dodgers. Mike Matheny making his way to the mound. A spectacular six and two thirds for the 22 year old right hander. And listen to this crowd. or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Well, with two 
two outs here in the seventh. The Cardinals have gone to the bullpen. Kevin Segrist comes on. Well, you see his numbers during the season. This left-hander throws without You're talking about Dan Plezak before? This left-hander has that kind of arm. And you heard Greg Sager talking about Michael Young taking swings in the cage. Gets the call here to pinch hit for Clayton Kershaw in the top of the seventh. That decision took quite a while, but the right decision. You've got to take a shot here. Michael Young have one big swing left in him. Pudo, the runner at first, reached on a two-out single. That's an effortless 96 right there. One ball, no strikes to the veteran, Michael Young. He came on last night after Gonzalez was pinch run for. Grounded into a double play and wafted the fly ball to right center that Beltron grabbed and threw out Mark Ellis at the plate. another one of those homegrown Cardinal talents who was drafted in 2007 41st round 1235 the pick number with up an ERA of 0 0.45 this year a 1 1 over for a strike 1 and 2 Did get a piece. One and two. Well, Ronnie, you've been in Michael Walker's shoes before. <laughs> you put in a sterling 6.2, and all you can do is watch now as your bullpen comes up. This is the toughest part of the game, but it's in good hands. Seagrest ended the regular season with a 25 inning scoreless streak. But in the NLDS, two for five for the right handed hitters against Seagrest. his fastball and he's using it up as high as 98 Michael Young likes the ball over the plate pretty good high ball hitter too uses the whole field it's tough when you don't get regular at bats to come in and pinch hit because that's where you get your timing down I'm amazed that uh, guys that can come in and do pinch hitting job you have to wipe your head clean and go up there and most good pinch hitters are aggressive aggressive within the strike zone so young steps back in punto at first earned himself a world series ring with the cardinals a couple years ago The one-two in the dirt. Molina blocked it, but Punto advances to second. He's the tying run. A great attempted block, but even better base running. Ball bounces way out in front of home plate. Not the conventional opportunity to block a ball with your chest protector. Just try to get your body in front of it someplace, almost like a goalie in that respect. 
Caputo read it well, was off, as soon as the ball hit the dirt. And this ball gets all the way back to the screen. Segrist bounces a couple on consecutive pitches, and now the tying run moves up 90 feet. And now this toughest part of the game got that much tougher for Waka. Well, he's trying to throw that changeup, but he's holding on to it too long twice in a row now. How do you do that? Just nerves. And it figures into the pitch selection right now. Do you risk it? Fastball all the way. Three balls and two strikes. Punto leads from third. Fly ball to right. Beltron has a beat on it. Middle of the seventh. Shut out intact. One nothing. Bottom half of the seventh inning here in St. Louis. Cardinals trying to uh, hold serve here in game two. They won game one in 13 innings. Another tough, tight ball game here today. One nothing, guys, bottom seven. Matt Holliday hit it well, but right at Schumacher for the first out. You know, Ernie, what I'm looking at is that Granke and Kershaw delivered. Frank with an amazing effort, but you lost that game. Kershaw, you're behind in this game. So they've gone 14 innings. Your two best pitchers giving up two earned runs, and you lost one, and you're behind in one. I feel like I need to apologize to you, Ron and Cal. At Holiday swinging at the first pitch. Didn't get you much face time there. <laughs> You're in the bottom of the seventh. We'll try to do better next time. <laughs> Belisario 
Outside. 1 and 0 to Molina. Kershaw lifted for a pinch hitter after working those six innings, allowing just the one unearned run. Came after a David Freeze double in the fifth, and a pass ball got him to third. John Jay brought him home with a sacrifice fly. Ronald Belisario, who worked last night, and a lot of guys did, comes up, comes up. 13 pitchers used in game one, that 13 inning game. And you wonder a little bit on the St. Louis side because Trevor Rosenthal, their closer, went two last night. Molina on the ground on a hop. Punta gets it. Nice play at short by Punto. And one of those easy throws to handle on the bounce to Gonzalez. Goes over, dives, uses the slide to get up. Very athletic. Intentionally bounce it. Bounces it. Adrian Gonzalez does a nice job of not getting out there too soon, reading the ball, stretching down the line, and catching that on the long hop. He's a good first baseman. So with two down, here's Freeze who has scored the game's only run. If Beltran's not in the middle of the action, Freeze is, or so it seems. Yeah, David Freeze definitely has a knack for getting the big hit. <laughs> He's proven that already in the playoffs in his early career. Oh. Wrote his name into Cardinal lore in 2011 against Texas in the World Series. And Cardinals tried to make his one run stand up here in game two. I've seen a couple circumstances where Matheny has turned his hitters loose 3 0 today. I suspect this might be one as well. Taking 3 and 1. And no indication that he wanted to swing at that. Up the middle, but. Ellis shaded that way, throws him out. One, two, three inning for Ronald Belisario. Seven innings in the books. One nothing game in St. Louis.
America game break looking ahead game one of the American League Championship Series tonight Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers in Fenway Park to take on David Ortiz the Red Sox perhaps a sluggers duel whereas we've had a couple of great pitching duels here in the National League EJ Six, look forward to checking that out on Fox as we eat dinner tonight Joe Buck Tim McCarver Aaron Andrews Ken Rosenthal will have it covered at Fenway here at Bush it's the top of the eighth Daniel Descalzo, the new third baseman, David Freeze out, and Randy Choate comes in to pitch in the eighth. And with that pitch, he has surpassed the number he threw in game one. When he, he came on and retired, the guy's facing now, Carl Crawford, on one pitch. Well, the 38-year-old left-hander just had to come in to face the lefty, but he might have to pitch the whole inning here. He's got Crawford, Ellis, and then Gonzalez in the third hole life of a matchup lefty. One for three. Singled his last time. Reaches out. Pops it up. Descalzo over there by the railing makes the play. One down. That ball will find you, Cal. Yeah, when you come into the game, you can rest assured that uh, you're going to make the play. That's that's a tough play because he has to keep his eye on the ball. He's got a sense of where the railing is, but I don't know exactly where it is. It makes a nice catch. He keeps his balance. One and done for Randy Choke. Carlos Martinez gets the call from Mike Matheny. Here in the eighth. shot here in downtown St. Louis. We're in game two of the NLCS. We are in the eighth in a one nothing game. And the cat and mouse well underway. Sebris came on and faced one hitter in the seventh. Retired Michael Young. Choate came on here in the eighth and got Crawford. And now it's Carlos Martinez facing Mark Ellis. You see this series bullpen has been outstanding. 11 when they won their world championship their bullpen played such a huge role in their success. Ellis is one out of three takes a strike one and one. In that year Tony La Russa, a little bit more radical shift like I think the the bullpen actually logged more innings than the uh, than the starters. But here is much more conventional. When you when you have a pitcher that gives you seven, you have a lot of options to match up in the last six outs. Yeah, Kelly gave him six last night in his start, and the bullpen came on and finished up the next seven scoreless. And a great start from Waka today. 
And now it's up to the St. Louis pen. Ellis waves at strike three. Two up and two down here in the eighth. Outstanding slider from Martinez. He's a guy that they think is going to be a starter at some point for them, but can become a two-pitch pitcher in the pen. That good sinking fastball and slider. Ninth strikeout by Cardinal pitching. Another meeting by Molina to make sure they're on the same page. I'm going to be a little careful. Agon has the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark here. Puig is on deck. Gonzalez, 22 home runs and 100 runs batted in in the regular season. Well, I guess if you're going to spot your 98 in that spot, you don't have to be too careful. Fooled him, 0-2. Well, they got some good young arms on this Cardinal staff. Martinez, another 22-year-old. Gonzalez to end the eighth. Cardinals three outs away from taking a 2 nothing lead in the NLCS. Aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, Cal, you got to get DirecTV. And you can call 1-800-DIRECTV. Thank you. It all makes sense. Hey, thanks for including me in that. <laughs> it's a new experience. Know what it means to you. Here's Matt Adams to lead it off in the bottom of the eighth against J.P. Howell. No 
strikes. Well, Howell's one of those crossover left-handers. You can use him against right-handers or left-handers. He's got the good breaking ball. It's sinking fastball. Flexible guy, too. Puts that glove right down there. and Makes me groan every time I watch him get loose. Two balls and no strikes. Adams 0 for 2. Lined to first and struck out against Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw went six, allowed just one run unearned. And that's the only run on the board here in St. Louis. There's a strike. One and two. Two and one, excuse me. And Lee Jansen loosening for the Dodgers. Gave up the hit to Beltron last night. The 2 1. Matt Adams right here. I'll tell you the whole story. He thought it was outside. I think it was. Two balls, two strikes to Adams, the leadoff hitter here in the eighth. Checked his swing. Jerry Barrett confirmed it. Down full. him accurately enough. He doesn't give in to throw any pitch at any time. Matt Adams has got to be thinking about a breaking ball in the back of his mind. It's 60 percent fastball. It's a little surprising. Tap towards second. Punto, who was playing on that side of the bag, who made the play. 6-3 in the book. The first out. Kind of felt like 4-3, didn't it? Looked like 4-3, officially 6-3. And here's John Jay. He has knocked in the day's only run. Sacrifice fly in the fifth. David Fries had doubled off of Kershaw, advanced to third on a pass ball, and then scored on the sacrifice fly to Crawford. Breaking pitch over 0 and 1. Asked to drive in the run, then asked to squeeze in the run, then asked to drive in the run, and he got it done. did try to squeeze him home, but he fouled it back. The other night we saw Uribe try to sacrifice unsuccessfully twice and then put one in the seats. This is how tough and tight a ball game it is when the highlight is a sacrifice fly that you replay as we flash back. But that's how the only run is scored in this game. Ball and a strike to the Cardinals center fielder. Looking ahead to the Dodger ninth, Yasiel Puig, Juan Uribe, Skip Schumacher, do. and two strikes. One thing JP does really well, I've noticed this, is he controls his own tempo. He throws the ball when he's ready. Even in the highest pressure situations, he seems to stay composed.
2-2 is hit well to center field, but Schumacher, after an early slip, recovers to make the play. Want to know the secrets of being a home run hitter? Tim Ferriss shows you how to knock it out of the park. Go to upwave.com slash baseball. Schumacher for just a second kind of spun his wheels before he made that play in center. Recovered nicely. Ball was hit well. Started a little bit in. And across in the angle, it adjusted well. And a nice running catch. They had a college football game here, so they had to replace some of the sod. Brought in some soil. Might be uh, the reason that we saw earlier Puig um, a miss, miss a ball in the gap in this series. So yesterday the ball skipped to the wall for a triple. 13 truckloads of sand they brought in here. So you can see that maybe not completely attached. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes looks and functionality could be different. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> no balls and two strikes. <laughs> that foul. One and two, the count to Cosma, who's 0 for 2. Grounded to second and popped to first. Shane Robinson's got a bat in the on-deck circle. A 1-2 to Cosmo. Misses. Two balls and two strikes. you talked about from earlier in this game. Carpenter with the triple to open the bottom half of the first inning, but they could not score him. The only run coming in the fifth. 2-2 Two -two from Howell. Count four. have a left-hander that close for you Randy Myers that would take a lot of time in between pitches. Howell does the same. It can be a challenge for if you're an infielder behind a situation like that. You want to say come on let's get to a rhythm. Don't put me to sleep here. Hey, hey. Down low two out walk to beat Cosmo. Shane Robinson now will pinch hit. 5'9", 165. Played 99 games this year. outside. Robinson had to overcome a little bit in the uh, course of his career. 2011 playing triple A ball when he had a collision with Andrew Brown. Broke his cheekbone, broke his finger. Broken finger certainly affected the way he swings the bat, but the broken cheekbone affected the way he eats and he dropped down to 140 when he got back with a big club. As he fouls it off, got back the big club in a September call up in 11 and he says guys would rib him and say hey go eat a cheeseburger or something he was 140 pounds had never been that light didn't want to weigh in didn't want to do anything but he 
is stuck with it. All that behind him, and here he bats in the eighth inning of an NLCS game against the Dodgers. One nothing, Cardinals leading, trying to pat it. Dodgers one more crack at it in the ninth. Robinson waits on a 1-1. One -one. Not be made as Howell again throws over to first. In the air, shallow right over by the line. Puig charging. Guy can cover some ground and makes the play for the third out. Eight innings in the books. A one nothing game as the Dodgers come to the plate in the ninth. We'll be back. The NBA returns with an opening night doubleheader on TNT. Derrick Rose makes his return to the court when the Heat hosts the Bulls, followed by the Battle of L.A. as the Lakers play the Clippers. That's Tuesday, October 29th, only on TNT. Premier Week presented by Autotrader.com. Top of the ninth here in St. Louis. Rosenthal pitched two innings six times this year. Two innings in last night's game, but in the entire season when he did that, he never pitched the next day. It's his first time. 
He faces Yasiel Puig to start the ninth. It's two balls and no strikes. Puig has yet to put the ball in play. Three strikeouts in three trips. And here's a strike from Rosenthal. By him, two and two. Well, the radar gun says he hasn't lost anything. Missed on the first two pitches, controlled. The last two pitches, 99, right by him. Big pitch, three, three. Follow straight back. You saw those numbers. About the Dodgers in the postseason being held scoreless it was against the Orioles back in the 66 World Series when Mo Drabowski finished off the first game in relief and then Jim Palmer, Wally Bunker, and Dave McNally shut him out. Strike three called to Krieg. Fourth strikeout of the day. Just a great pitch on the outside corner. Tough one to hit, tough one to take. That brings up Juan Uribe. We saw Uribe the other night with the home run in the eighth inning as the Dodgers beat the Braves in the clincher. That was a rarity for this Dodger team. 0 oh 2. Because when they trailed after seven innings, only 4 and 52. But they won that game in the clincher. Ball and a strike to Uribe. 1 and 2. And two down. Both strikeouts from Rosenthal. And the last four Dodgers have struck out. And here is Andre Ethier. Who started in center field in the marathon opener. Schumacher got the start today. Ethier comes off the bench here in the ninth. One Ooh. fastball after another. If you don't throw 98 miles an hour, you're not even allowed in the Cardinal bullpen. The series 2 0. Holding the Dodgers to two runs over 22 innings. Feels like a wasted effort, doesn't it? Yeah. 
two of the game's best pitchers pitching really well and two losses. The next three will be in Los Angeles. Let's go down to Craig Sager. Well, what a pitching duel between Michael Walker and Clayton Kershaw. You had it going, throwing a lot of fastballs in there. How tense was it after you came out of the game with a 1 0 lead? Oh, you know, uh, pretty tense in there, but you know, our bullpen's clutch, and you know, they've been pretty clutch all season, and so I knew it was in good hands whenever, uh, you know, I came out of the game and they shut it down for me. One run, we didn't know if that would hold up. Sixth inning, Dodgers load the bases. Tell us what was going through and take us through that inning. Oh, geez, I mean, adrenaline was flying high. I was able to get the pop out with uh, sec on second and third, no outs, and then, you know, walk to Gonzalez, just put him on, he's a dangerous hitter, and you know, I was lucky enough uh, to get a couple of strikeouts there and, you know, keep our team uh, in the lead there. 22 years old, some of the best pitching performances we've seen against Pittsburgh and now against L.A. Are you nervous at all? How do you approach these games? Uh, not really nervous uh, approaching it. Just just a little bit more an anxiety kind of deal, you know, just sitting around before a game, uh, and, you know, in a big-time game like this. And, you know, just, uh, just anxious to get out here. But, you know, once I get out on the mound and, Throw that first pitch, everything uh, seems to calm down. Perfect performance. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Back to you, EJ. All right. Thank you very much, Craig. Our final score, the Cardinals won the Dodgers nothing. Tune in Monday at 7.30 Eastern with MLB postseason pregame on TBS presented by Jeep. For Ron Darling, Cal Ripken, Craig Sager, and the rest of the crew, this is Ernie Johnson saying good night from St. Louis. TBS is your exclusive home of the NLCS. Now stay tuned for the postseason show on TBS presented by Johnny Walker. Remember to drink responsibly.